Hey guys, if you're shopping for knives and gear, make sure you check out the description of the video you're watching right now for links to some great online retailers. There's also individual links for knives that I personally recommend. Thanks. What's going on YouTube? Metal Complex here and today I've got another interesting knife review slash knife overview to share with you guys. This is the Civivi Fracture Slip Joints. So this is a non-locking knife from Civivi. Pretty cool. I'm going to tell you guys right now, this is a very inexpensive knife. $28. We're looking at G10 for the scales, uh, steel liners, and then 8CR 14 MOV steel, which is very similar to OS 8. Civivi has a reputation for making excellent quality budget knives, uh, and uh, most of their knives, you know, come in around the 40 to 60 dollar mark. Um, yeah, there's not going to be a lot to complain about here at $28. I'm going to do a full review and give you guys my complete thoughts, but um, this is a good knife. Sometimes I'll tell people right off the bat at the beginning of a video if it's just, you know, obviously for the money, it's going to be good. Yeah, this is a good knife. I will link this down below uh, so you guys can check it out. It comes in a couple of different variations, and I'll also link Civivi knives in general so you can check out what else they have to offer. This knife was sent to me by this person right here at CXLBIE, and I think that's an underscore on Instagram. Thank you so much for sending this. They also sent uh, another another CVV knife, so I really appreciate that. It's because people like that, them that I'm able to bring you guys um, daily knife content, uh, so please give them a follow. It's also because of my generous patrons. Thank you so much for supporting me. If you're enjoying, <laughs> enjoying, if you're enjoying the daily knife content on this channel and you'd like to support it, there is of course a link for Patreon right down in the description. Uh, you'll also get some exclusive benefits. And please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore com. Complex. All right, let's go ahead and get a measurement. Um, this is a, a pretty large slip joint knife. I mean, as far as slip joints go, coming in at about 7.75 inches overall, maybe just a hair short of that. It's very similar in profile and overall size to the Benchmade 940. So if you've ever, you know, if you like the 940 and you're like, gosh, it would be neat to have a similar size slip joint version of this knife. Well, here you go, and it's 28 bucks. Um, let's go ahead and do some size comparisons here. So up against the Ontario Rat Model 1, Rat 1 is coming in at 8.6 inches overall. As you can see there, definitely not a small knife, not a medium-sized knife. How about up against the Spyderco PM2? Spyderco PM2 is coming in at 8.3 inches overall. How about up against the Benchmade Griptilian, or in this case, the Ritter Hogue? Ritter Hogue coming in at 8 inches overall. How about up against the Spyderco Para 3? Spyderco Para 3 is coming in at seven and a quarter inches overall. And last but not least, the Benchmade Mini Griptilian. Benchmade Mini Griptilian coming in at 6.75 inches overall. How's the action on this guy? Well, it's a slip joint knife. Um, so it does have a mid stop and then it does snap close nicely. So this um, out here where it locks into place, it's really nice. This transition, I guess, from here to here, pulling it open feels good, and then the snap down into place feels pretty good. The mid-stop is present. It's a little mushy, I guess. You know, the I, when I, you know, am critiquing slip joint knives, and I mean, truthfully, it's when I'm usually looking at a nicer one, but sometimes, you know, less expensive ones have this too. This snap into the mid-stop feels a little more solid. This is it's okay. It does have a mid-stop and then it does snap close, right? It's really all the more that I could expect considering the price. Um, it's not perfect, but it's really hard for me to critique this. Again, a lot of what I'm going to say here, I have to adjust it because it's so inexpensive, right? It's good. It's good enough for the price. I really can't complain. There's no wiggle down here. There's no blade play in the locked out position except for, you know, up and down, of course, because it's not a, it's a, you know, not on locking blade right but it feels solid um honestly it feels it feels good enough for the price absolutely let's go ahead and do carry profile so thickness up against the spider co para three you can see here not a thick knife not by any stretch of the, uh, stretch of the imagination and that's great a lot of people are really going to like that how about some uh comparisons this way height and length versus two knives that have uh awkward carry profiles that nobody ever seems to complain about uh lengthwise uh, little tiny bit longer. We are at an angle here. A uh, little tiny bit longer than the Para 3. Nowhere near as long as the PM2 and nowhere near as tall height-wise, right? So couple that with the fact that it is thin and lightweight. This is simply going to be an easy knife to carry for most people. Did we do, did we measure the blade length? <laughs> 
<laughs> we didn't. Hang on. Sorry about that. Blade length on this guy is coming in at three and a quarter, so it's maybe a little bit more. I mean, if you measure it down here, if you're measuring from here, you're looking at like 3.3. If you're measuring it from up here, maybe a, a little bit more, something like that, about 3.3. The cutting edge is about three, about three and a quarter, right? Still going to be over the legal limit for some people, which... I know, those those laws can be ridiculous, um, but it's a non-locking knife, so that may solve some issues for some people in some parts of the United States or the world, so there you go. Um, let's go ahead and do a hardware check on this guy and get out my uh, Wea bit selector and magnetic driver here. These are inexpensive, very recommendable. I also have more expensive options. You can find this stuff down in the description if you'd like to pick it up for yourself. Um, usually Civivi does a good job with T8, yeah, T8, what's going on here? Oh, it's just not tightened all the way. <laughs> Let's just give this a little bit of a crank. There we go. And I might as well check them all here. I just, I've gotten to the point where I just expect Civivi knives to use these, uh, countersunk, uh, T8 screws, and I like them a lot. They're easy to adjust, right? In this case, this is a slip joint, so there's... I guess you could call it a few more complications with taking it apart and putting it back together, but it, it shouldn't be that difficult. Um, they've made that process with these types of knives a little bit easier, in my opinion, by using T8 screws. Now, there are quite a few six-body screws, and back here, of course, we have T6 pocket clip screws, which is fine. Um, but I'm happy that the screws that are on here are T8. I've always said this. I'll take more hardware if they're going to be T8 versus minimal hardware over T6. I just... They don't like T6 as much, but it's not a deal breaker even if it is. In this case, it's not. It's T8, so that's great. Um, I'm happy with that. No complaints. Let's go ahead and weigh it. Actually, let's do um, blade stock thickness first. Can we get her to stand up? Yes, we can. don't think this is going to be a, a thick blade at all. Um, can just tell by looking at it. Blade stock thickness on the fracture coming in at, yeah, there you go. Not a thick blade at all. Weight on this guy. Let's go ahead and get the scale out here weight on the Civivi fracture coming in at three ounces. That's not a problem. That's under the four ounce mark. It's on the, the whole ounce and inch mark thing, right? For most people, this is not going to be a cumbersome object. It'll be just fine in uh, lightweight pant material, right? In khakis and jeans. Um, this is a versatile, you know, type of blade. It's also something I appreciate about it is well, I'm actually on the side of the fence that says that locking knives are safer than non-locking knives. I think a lot of us, when we were younger, got our first cuts from slip joint knives. And while that does teach an important lesson, it's also something that I am cautious about. Like, people always ask me, like, what, what, what kind of knife would you give your kids first, right? And I think for a lot of people, the obvious answer is what we started out with. I'm 33 years older. Uh, I was born in 1987. What a lot of us started out with was a slip joint knife, right? Um, I, <laughs> I got a healthy amount of cuts from slip joint knives and it did teach me a valuable lesson, but so I'm not really sure. I'm, you know, I, I'm, I'm cautious about giving, uh, you know, my, my son or daughter when it comes time, uh, giving them a slip joint knife. Right. Um, uh, but, uh, you know, it, like I said, it teaches a lesson. So, um, I, it's, it, this is a knife that is going to be, um, my point here is that this is a knife that is, uh, that people can figure out how to manipulate almost instantly. There's an obvious place, right, to grab it and pull it open, right? It's a slip joint. Most people, I think, are aware, even non-knife people, I, I kind of think are familiar with, uh, slip joint knives. So that is something that I appreciate about it. It is very easy to manipulate, very, very simple. Um, have we got through all of that? Yeah, I think we did. Let's go ahead and talk about the anatomy here. So we have the typical Civivi peel ply textured G10 scales that have been nicely rounded all the way around, right? This is the part that I usually go over. Uh, it, it seems like more often than not I'm saying, yep, it's it's uh, nicely knocked down and it's it's comfortable. Everything's comfortable here. The ergonomics on it are great, actually. Um, I can get a full four-finger position grip on this guy. Uh, I can feel the pocket clip a little bit. Something I always say about Civivi knives is because of this bill here. I prefer pocket clips like this. 
come down and swoop up uh, that are more low profile and just less cornery, I guess. If I'm going to be using this knife consistently with bare hands, that's the part I'm going to feel. But if you're going to do that, you're probably going to wear gloves. And honestly, you're probably not going to be using a knife like this. But if you are, you're going to notice that pocket clip. It's not the biggest deal in the entire world. I wish it was just a continuous ramp so that it would conform to whatever thickness of pocket seam. But this works just fine. This isn't a bad clip, right? It's a solid B of a clip. Perhaps in other reviews I've given it a B minus. I have no idea. Somewhere in that vicinity, it's not a big deal. Um, the blade in this case is a uh, sort of a, a dark tumbled finish. We have this enormous opening slot, and you can, <laughs> if you're gonna do that, God, can I even do it? No, not really. Honestly, as far as one-handed manipulation goes on this guy, it's strong enough right here. I don't consider myself somebody who has weak hands. <laughs> How do I go about this without making it so like, I have really strong hands and I can't do it. Some people might be able to open this with, um, there we go. <laughs> you can, if you pinch open it from both sides and you get way down here so you can get the right amount of leverage, then maybe. But this is not a convenient or truthfully safe way to open it. This is not a knife that was designed to be deployed uh, quickly either. It's a knife that you're going to pull out of your pocket. Most people are just going to open it like this, which is fine. There's lots of room to grab it here. I don't have an issue with that. I mean, that makes sense to me. This whole area could have been smaller, but I don't really care that it isn't, right? Uh, if you need to open it from down here, you need to open it from up here. Whatever your preference is, it's fine. It does that, right? The uh, edges up here have all been knocked down. There's nothing sharp up here on the spine, which is great. Uh, the blade and final cutting bevel are perfectly symmetrical, no wonkiness. The edge is also great. Um, pretty darn thin behind the edge, which is what I would expect for a knife like this. The tip is definitely going to be delicate and very pokey, right? Um, this isn't a knife where I would do a lot of pokey, stabby tasks into very dense or thick material because if you're doing that, remember it's not locking so there's a chance that it could fold on you and actually right there, this the how, it, how quickly it wants to move to this position, that is a recipe for disaster and a, uh, a cut on your index finger. So I wouldn't do that. Um, obviously the, um, you know, with this being non-locking, it's bracing back here on this, um, you know, this backstop, whatever you want to call it, right? So the pressure in your cuts should, you know, be directed into the blade. Um, that's kind of the issue with slip joint knives in general is that you are, it's, it's nowhere near um, as safe, you know, to perform certain types of tasks versus a knife that locks, right? You need to puncture through something. You need to kind of cut and wiggle the blade around a little bit, which sometimes does occur depending on what you're doing, right? Um, Shaman's not a comparable knife, right? But it's, it's going to serve as a representation of a locking knife. Um, so yeah, this isn't, uh, you know, while it can puncture, right? If you're just cutting into a package or something, obviously this is going to be fine. Uh, but I, this isn't a knife that I would take out and do like hardcore puncture or wiggly cut, right? If I'm just going to get it out and make a simple cut. You do have plenty of cutting edge. So, you know, this is a blade that you can do continuous cutting with. And I think it's going to pass through material pretty readily considering the surface is pretty smooth. Um, there is a flat that carries out about 85 to 90% the length of the blade and it's pretty prominent, but they still, because of the, the spine thickness and um, this, God, is it, is it hollow ground? It really feels like it's hollow ground. Yeah, it's, it's very thin behind the edge. So it's, it's going to perform well. It's going to do exactly what um, it should do. Absolutely. I always like how Civivi puts their logo on the pivot and they don't put a bunch of stuff all over the blade. What is the blade? Uh, it's 8CR 14 MOV. I think I mentioned that earlier on uh, in the review. Um, yeah, that's it's very similar to 8CR 13 MOV. Uh, HCR 13 MOV, I emphasized the wrong part of that. Um, and altogether, it's very similar to OS 8. OS 8 is not considered a specialty steel. Uh, it's an ingot form steel that is uh, very corrosion resistant, pretty tough, doesn't hold an edge very long, but it's very easy to sharpen. Again, um, that's fine considering the price range um, and what this knife is meant to be used for. I just don't have an issue with that. I'm perfectly okay with that steel uh, in that price range. Fit and finish all the way around looks great. Back here on the spine, everything is great. Where the um, tang of the blade meets up uh, on the um, the spine. What I, what do you call this? What is the word? <coughs> so many terms flying around in my head all the time. I forget. I'm sure somebody will correct me down below. But where the blade meets up to it is just fine. 
I just don't have uh, an issue with any of this. There's an area back here um, where you can uh, attach a lanyard if you want to, and it is completely and totally out of the way or not being prioritized over the pocket clip. The pocket clip, why am I emphasizing weird parts of words? Uh, the pocket clip allows the knife to carry plenty deep and the screws are recessed. So for the most part, in and out of the pocket, it's gonna be super duper simple. Uh, the other side of the knife is exactly the same as the front. In fact, you can actually switch the pocket clip over to this side, making it not only uh, you know possible for people who are left-handed to carry this knife, but it also makes the knife completely and totally ambidextrous considering this is not a left or right-handed um, oriented knife. It's gonna be exactly the same on both sides. That's something that I appreciate. The knife is completely and totally centered. And like I said, in this position, left and right play, uh, there is none. It's It's solid, it's fixed in there. This is an easy review. There's not much I can complain about. For people looking for an inexpensive uh, slip joint, I, this is a winner. Um, you know, uh, there are lots of different people looking for lots of different types of slip joints, right? But as far as what I would say would be required uh, in this price range, I don't have a lot of expectations, but in a lot of ways, this knife still exceeds my expectations. I have very few nitpicks, right? I mean, like, I've handled so many knives that are more expensive than this, both locking and non-locking knives, that just don't do it as well as Civivi did it here for $28. Yeah, this area in here is a little bit mushy. It doesn't have quite that. You see what I mean? I want it to snap into that position. It's actually kind of just, right? And then here, bam, that's a nice snap. And here, click. Right, it's just kind of right here. It's just a little bit mushy. All right, maybe your experience will vary. This seems pretty new. I'm going to guess they're mostly like this. It's not a big deal. That's a really, really minor nitpick, right? Uh, the pocket clip has a bit of a, you know, forward bill. Uh, what else can I say here? <laughs> can I recommend this knife? Yeah, this is great. This would be a great gift. You know, with Christmas coming up, this is a great, you know, gift to give somebody who doesn't have a, a decent pocket knife, you know, just something that they can carry on their person or keep in a junk drawer or keep, you know, in a, a convenient location in their vehicle or their house somewhere, right? Maybe out in the garage in their toolbox, something like that. I think most people can find a, a place for this uh, knife in their life. There are certainly uh, lots of knives out there that I will recommend before this one that cost a little bit more money, and many of them come from Civivi, right? Um, but uh, gosh, it's just 28 bucks. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, this is great. I just, I just don't have a problem with this. This is an extremely recommendable knife. It'll be going on uh, two different playlists. It'll be going on my Cheap Knives That I Like playlist as well as my Recommended Knives playlist. Um, so you can check out the uh, both playlists, whether you're looking just generically recommended knives that are of various price ranges or if you're looking specifically just for budget knives that I really like, you can check out either of those playlists that have all of those knives, you know, nicely uh, organized in, uh, within. Anyways, um, I think that's going to be pretty much it today, guys. Pretty cool, pretty straightforward. Uh, please follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. Don't forget to check out this knife and Civivi knives in general right down in the description. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do, of course, have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like, so check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on that metal complex logo right there and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody and have a great day.